uh, privileged to be here. Not only to speak to uh, radiologists, my son is a radiologist, and to speak in this incredible surrounding. Uh, in 1963, I think, I remember I was a student when John Kennedy addressed uh, 30 Nobel Prize winners in the White House and said, he said, this is the most creative collection of brilliance since Thomas Jefferson ate alone. <laughs> what I have behind me is the cover of Math and the Mona Lisa that was published in, 19, in 2004 on April the 15th. It was supposed to be called The Two Leonardos. That's what I had in mind when I, uh, when I wrote the book. I approached the Oxford University Press and uh, the Smithsonian Books for it, and they loved the idea, but I had two different Leonardos in mind. One of them was the mathematician Leonardo Fibonacci de Pisa, who had lived 300 years earlier. And the other one, of course, was Leonardo da Vinci. <coughs> one was called Il Pisano, or the man from Pisa, and the other one was the Il Fiorentino, the man from Florence, 300 years later. That's what the book was going to be called, The Two Leonardos. I went with the Smithsonian. Halfway through the book, they called me in and they said, this is 95% about, about Leonardo da Vinci and only 5% about the other guy. Can you change the title with maybe have a possessive in it? Galileo's Daughter was out. It was a wonderful book by uh, uh, Deva Sobol. And they wanted me to do something with a little possessive in it. I said, sure, let's make it Leonardo, Leonardo's model. That's a nice double entendre. It could be his modus operandi, or it could be the woman who sat for the most famous painting in the world. They said, great, we'll go with Leonardo's model. A good friend of mine, a Nobel Prize winner, Bill Phillips, said, I love that. In physics, we just do models, and Leonardo was really doing models. He was a scientist. When the book was finally finished, and I turned to the 13th chapter, uh, they called me back into the office. They said, we don't think it's going to sell with that title. Uh, I said, what would it, would it sell with? Uh, they said, well, we think that maybe Math and the Mona Lisa sounds better. It was alliteration. I hemmed and hawed, and I said, well, I guess that would give us license to put the, uh, the Mona Lisa on the cover. And the editor, the senior editor, smiled from ear to ear and pulled out the cover, just like this. It had already been printed. <laughs> so they know what to do with books. Marketing departments know much, much better than authors do. What I liked here, on the back of the book, they had put the uh, grotesques. But more importantly, it was this drawing. Now, uh, the Mona Lisa is superimposed on one page, a rather soiled page of Leonardo's uh, codices. There are four to 5,000 pages that have survived of his original 20,000 pages. Incredible. I mean, what's lost is another civilization that he could have been creating. But here, this drawing, for the opening of an exhibition we had at, at Mary Washington in Fredericksburg, uh, you certainly can't get any paintings. There are only a dozen or so in the world. You can't get any of those drawings. They're worth millions each. So we had the uh, facsimiles from the National Gallery, and we had the inventions. And the facsimiles I had chosen, and this was one of the facsimile drawings. Two of my good friends, one of them, Norman Ramsey, who wrote the first PhD on nuclear magnetic resonance, which of course became the MRI as magnetic resonance imaging, and later did, invented the atomic clock and won a Nobel Prize. He's now about 93, he is 93. He was at the exhibition, this display, and Bill Phillips, my good friend, was there. And I pulled him aside and I said, look at this drawing. When they looked at it, they kept taking their glasses off, putting them back on, they couldn't believe it. They, and simultaneously, and in unison, they said, that's the telescope. He had designed the reflecting telescope 180 years before Isaac Newton ever did. And Newton, of course, is the greatest scientist of all. This is the sort of thing that you see in the codices, but you have to know the sciences, actually, to really appreciate what he was.